Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Squapcast. I'm Adam from Squared Up, and today I've got some real engineers, no product managers this week, just some proper engineers. I've got Nathan and Shaz. Hey guys. Hello, Adam. Thank you very much Hello, for Adam. thank you very much for joining. So Shaz, you're in our DevOps team. Nathan, yep. you are currently responsible for something to do with monitoring. Um maybe let's yeah. go. Shaz, tell us a little bit about your day job. Um, yeah, so hi, Shaz, um, DevOps engineer at Squared Up, looking after our build and our infrastructure, so CI, CD, and all the way to release. Um, yeah, that's most part of it. Okay, so when Squared Up Cloud can't be deployed, it's probably because you've broken something, and, and that's where Nathan comes in, right? Yeah. Yep, that's where I come in. And those of you that have seen me around before i came from the scam space so i i do like monitoring and that's, that's where i am now finding where uh, things are going wrong hopefully not going wrong and displaying how well things are running nice well thanks for yeah thanks for your, your time today we've got an interesting topic um terraforming dashboards the title of course based on the wonderful board game terraforming mars which is a classic on the shelf right behind me um, let's start with a little bit, um, we'll assume everybody knows what Terraform is when we get into the demo, it can be nice and technical, but just in case, let's, um, let's start with just a quick, like what, what, what is Terraform and, and what do people do with it? Um, yeah, so Terraform is an infrastructure as a code tool, which is developed by HashiCorp. Uh, it's a cloud agnostic tool, so it has multiple providers, um, for different, different cloud providers, uh, mostly allows you to provision, define your infrastructure across, again, various cloud providers, helping you to set up, maintain, and scaling of your infrastructure. Um, in high level, your infrastructure is just defined in, in code. Mm -hmm. yeah. nice. I always like to, th like to think of it as like a, a recipe. Like Terraform lets you write infrastructure as a recipe of what you want, and then Terraform is just the cook. <clears throat> Got it. Which nice. Could be confusing because Chef is a competitor to Terraform. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, and then you can change the recipe and just say update it. So it's great. I remember um, when I first joined Squared Up and we were a tiny little team. Even then, we still had the requirement for running sort of big SCOM labs in Azure, and you know, engineers all had their own VMs, that kind of stuff. And I remember um, one of our engineers used to maintain a Terraform template that defined all of our. Azure VMs, if you wanted a new one, you had to ask very nicely and some Terraform work would be done and then resources would pop out, right? So pretty simple for keeping things nice and tidy, keeping them in check, making sure everything's as expected. And I guess in the more sort of modern world with um, CI, CD tools deploying infrastructure and deploying code onto that infrastructure, it's a great sort of way to automate all of the, all of the things that, that would otherwise be a pain in the neck. Yeah. Do we use it internally for anything at the moment? Um, so going exactly back to what you, you mentioned before, uh, that was the starting point for me for Terraform as well. Uh, we then built our um, Azure test lab using Terraform. So to find us code, all code changes, like you mentioned, goes through the change process. Um, it's still running and active at the moment. And yeah, we're using it for dashboarding now. Nice. Well, that's a nice little segue then into what, why you might use Terraform for your dashboards as well. What are the, the sort of typical challenges that you might find if you're deploying loads of infrastructure through pipelines? I guess, Nathan, from your point of view, without something like Terraform, any new resource that needs a dashboard, any new app that needs a dashboard, you'd have to go and sort of build that manually. And I guess maybe in a in a world where you're deploying sort of like transient things, maybe something only exists for a, a couple of hours, you're probably not going to put in the effort to build dashboards that you have to then tear down again. Yeah, I think in a SaaS world, one of the great things we see is we have different versions, you know, GA, RC, and they roll through as as with most SaaS products. But we can spin up a new dashboard and compare side to side on potentially a bug. You know, we hopefully people don't see it but we might know internally that we're looking at a spike or something and we can just have those built out at the end of the deployment phase and then they show up and then after they've become obsolete it just deletes them cleans them up so there's no need to have this stack of like you said 
two, three releases a day, 300 for the last three months. It just cleans them up when it's done. New ones show up when they're ready. So. Nice. Okay. So um, what, what are some other, I guess, like common, well, let's move on to our provider, right? So we, we built a Terraform yep. provider because people love Terraform. It's very, very, very widely adopted, very sort of common, popular tool. Um, let's start with like, what does our provider actually let you do in Squared Up? What are the, the features that it covers? Um, so we try to take the most things that could be like repeated. So we built around those. Uh, starting with like our workspaces, um, dashboards. You can share your dashboards through Terraform. You can add, um, well, manage data sources through it, and as well as scopes. We also allow you to do a um, graph lookup. So if you want to look, look for your object in the graph, you can do that as well. Uh, we manage um, scripts and workspace alerts. So that's what we cover at the moment with our provider. Nice. So, so I guess, yeah, fair enough. So for for your typical use case of maybe you've deployed a new subscription into Azure with some resources in with, the Terra, with our Terraform provider, you can then set up a connection to Azure to connect to that subscription, maybe with its own, you know, some credentials that you've already set up. You can build out a workspace with that data source connected to it. You can add some dashboards that suit the, the use case for whatever resources you've deployed um including i think you said custom scripts and various other bits and pieces like that so kind of end to end from like the the typical like connect your data show your data on the screen kind of stuff yeah yeah, yeah. That, that was sort of thinking was like you know you're creating your resources through your through uh terraform if you're already maintaining your infrastructure th through it you could deploy a uh, dashboard side by side with it like whether mm -hmm. that's maybe like updating a scope because yeah. like when you're managing everything to through Terraform, you can just reference whatever you've just created now, and then based on that, create workspaces, dashboards, or scopes, anything, anything. So cool. Um, coming to you, Nathan, I know we use Terraform, or rather you use Terraform internally to manage customer dashboards. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that that use case, probably without showing any anybody their, their dashboard live on the webinar. Yeah, yeah, we, we definitely won't bring that out. But uh... Yeah, with being that it's programmatic, you can take dynamic data and feed in, which makes it great for when like a new tenant or a new squared up customer comes on. We can build out a dashboard with the key metrics to make sure things are running great um, just for that focused on that customer. And it can programmatically look it up from the back end, generate it, show which lambdas might be running slow for them. And hopefully we can catch something slow running beforehand. Um, yeah, and it just lets yeah. us build those out much easier than having to, you know, phone a support team to do it to find out that maybe they never had an issue. So it's just ready if someone does call in. And in that in that scenario for these customer dashboards, we're talking about sort of pulling data directly from our platform from AWS. We've yeah. got data in Salesforce. We've got support information in Zendesk. Maybe there are issues open in Jira. That kind of doesn't matter, right? You can, it doesn't matter where, where it is. You've got the data sources connected. You can build the dashboards with the right data streams, showing the information you want. Yeah, it, it turns out to be a perfect example for kind of the cross data stream sources. So as you mentioned, we'll take Zira, uh, Jira and Zendesk, mix those two together on the fly there. Jira and Zendesk, for example, say someone calls in and they're like, well, I'm having this issue. We can actually see that like, oh yeah, there's, there's a Jira that's to be deployed in the next week and a half that targets a bug that we see one of the plugins you use has but it's pulled real time from jira it's not it didn't require someone to go through and update every single ticket yeah. same for zendesk you can say like oh yeah there's there's a reported issue with this something and it surfaces it much quicker for all parties involved gets that data out of the shadows okay um fine so it's uh, I, I guess it's pretty simple to to use maybe there's um maybe there's already some really nice helpful like github repo full of samples or you know something like that yeah as it would happen i just created a github repo two or three weeks ago called introduction to squared up terraform let me let me share it for those that have the screen up that certainly sounds like it's along the right lines for the topic yeah So 
So you should be seeing a screen here that says Introduction to Squared Up Terraform. Got it. Perfect. Uh, so just to, for those that hadn't listened to the uh, Squubcast, it's kind of designed that when you land on here, the README even walks you through, you know, what are you going to do? Like, well, this is the reason we made it. And there's three examples. You've got a basic, just a complete bare bones one it says, hello world. Maybe you want to extend one of your existing dashboards. This covers it. And there's even a more advanced example where it creates a new uh, Azure connection, kind of like you'd mentioned earlier. Um, and just to prove kind of in real, in a real demo, how easy it actually is, I've uh, opened it up in VS Code here. And for those that are keen, this is a valid API key, but I'll change it you know, <laughs> 90 seconds after we're finished here. So don't think we're leaking anything exciting. Um, but really, in your Terraform, you just have a Terraform file. And it goes through as simple as you tell Terraform, like, yeah, I want to use the squared up provider, which is Terraform's link between HashiCorp's language and squared up's API. You say, here's how you're going to connect to squared up. And then you just go and tell it, like, yeah, let's make a new dashboard, give it a workspace ID, a display name, call it the basic dashboard, and just our dashboard JSON, which we've got documented in a couple places or available through the um, UI. And you can even do some mustache replacement in there. So for this example, I've got a, a content where I'm saying what the text block is. And so once you're done, you just need to do a Terraform apply. You can even do a auto approve if you don't want to skip. Don't want to wait for that. And if we go look here, see if we're quick enough. Yeah, there's no dashboards here. And it should pop up about as quick as we click over. You can see, like, yeah, there's there's the dashboard that I had. So, and and so I guess if you were to, like you would, you know, with the, the benefit of having all these things stored in a, in a repo somewhere, if you were to sort of make a change, commit that, some pipeline that's deploying this, obviously get some new file, I guess in this case, is it going to spin out another new dashboard or will it update the dashboard you've already got? How sort of scalable, manageable does it make it? So that was one of the, the reasons I made the simple repos like this is personally, I find it so much easier to learn when it's, when you can go in, change it, click apply, click apply, see what happens. Um, I struggle to read through a bunch of text and, and get it. So as you had said, you go in and change it, and it'll update your dashboard unless you change the name of the dashboard, and that's how we key them off. Um, so if you just change this value on here, we can save that, and you just re-hit apply, and you'll see Terraform takes care of everything in the background. It goes out, it checks, and says, oh, this dashboard already exists. There's the ID. You can kind of see it flash by there. It says, oh, I have one to change. Um, it handles all the heavy lifting in the background. And if we refresh this, you'll see that the simple text change I made is now changed in the dashboard. So it gives you a great way to get that, just that hands-on type feeling of how it actually works instead of you know, dry book work. How, how strict is it in terms of, say, like, let's say I, I come into your workspace and I clone this dashboard because I really like it, but I want to make a few tweaks without upsetting you. Let's take that case where, like, I flooded loads of new dashboards into your workspace. Do, do we do any cleanup through the provider or, do, like, do we do we strictly keep the workspace per a definition or do we allow those sort of clones to, to continue to exist? I may have to defer defer to Shaz on that one. I know it won't damage the, so what we have here, if we do like this and change it back, it'll change the dashboard I've been working on, but your clone in this case will remain so we can keep working side by side. However, you yeah. you can do a whole workspace managed and I'm not sure if it'll clean them out or not there. Um, yeah, because as it's part of the workspace, if you're managing the workspace through Terraform, and if you've deleted the workspace, then because the dashboard is within the workspace, would get rid of it yeah so if, if 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 the workspace is there and i've just made a bunch of extra dashboards that are in the workspace but not part of the template would, would they get cleaned up or do they get left alone if terraform if the if terraform was running a cleanup then it would clean those up okay cool so you can keep things we should have this in our demo lab because constantly would 
at an event doing a demo and you click into a workspace looking for that one key dashboard and there's like new dashboard one new dashboard two new dashboard three and there's hundreds of them all over the place so yeah i think if, yeah being able to keep a nice sort of clean structure is nice and obviously in square up you can just hit you know copy to and move the dashboard that you like into your own workspace or your team's workspace whatever that kind of stuff so that's pretty neat um i think that that same maintenance mindset works great, even for the internal dashboards on the monitoring stuff we do. You don't want to lock down dashboards so much that people can't play with it, right? Because maybe someone has a different aspect you haven't thought of. But you also don't want the example you're talking about where it drifts, that it says, like, John's view of performance and then, like, Sally's view. And you're like, this is, why do we have this? So Terraform keeps them clean. And as long as you document that, right, they'll reach out to the monitoring team and say, like, oh, hey, can you add a tile for this? Sure, we get it in there, but Terraform does kind of help us yeah. keep it clean without locking it down to the point to say, like, oh, you can't touch anything in here, because that's also not what we want to do with the product. We want to let you explore the data, and then, yeah, so I liked how it does that. Just just back on our sort of internal dashboards, how, how do you automate that? Is it, like, when a customer signs up? Is it when, a, you know, when we close a deal in Salesforce? What actually triggers Terraform to run? So in our case, we've currently just got the easiest and do a GitHub action. So it's on a schedule, runs every night. Uh, any of the options actually would uh, probably be feasible. It really only takes 30, 45 seconds. So they're really cheap to run GitHub actions. You could run it as much as you'd like. And we just picked like, oh yeah, we'll just run it nightly and kind of bring you up to date. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's interesting actually. I mean. Uh... I think the automation automation in general, I think, is is obviously very useful in cases like this. And we already have, for example, you know, deal closes in in Salesforce. Let's post into our customers channel on Slack and let everybody know that we've closed a new deal or someone's renewed that kind of stuff. I guess we could include in that same. Um, I think that's, I think that's Zapier that actually runs that little like check Salesforce yeah. do Slack thing. I guess you could add a like webhook to to GitHub to trigger the action to build the dashboards again and that kind of stuff so yeah timer nice and easy but yeah it triggers into into whatever um and i guess if it's part of a, a more sort of formal ci cd process it's going to be on you know like prs merged into master trigger a build trigger deployments that kind of stuff yeah and i think yeah. anyone that's played the oh sorry i said played the automation game you run into the race conditions where it's like oh and it does this and you're like oh that's not ready yet and so that's when on the monitoring dashboards you've almost said like well, give it three or four hours because there's a lot of modern systems in a you know a regular business between what engineering has set up and what they're and just to, to kick it off immediately it'll work you'll just get a bunch of tiles that they're not ready yet and yeah we found it's easier to say like oh yeah the expectation is four to five hours and um, yeah i think our the the data pipeline tool we use segment does um a lot of sort of syncing between things and Google BigQuery is a destination for for a lot of that data. Um, the sort of telemetry that comes out of the platform at a million miles an hour, we have to keep yeah. holding it somewhere. And you know, cheap data warehousing is is nice and easy, even though that's not typically how we interface with it. But I guess like yeah, if 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 in your organization you're syncing things across different tools, even if that trigger is instant, you've probably got to wait some amount of time before you know monitoring data appears in Dynatrace for the first time, or you know that kind of stuff happening. Yeah, I think that's, we had talked about it one of the other days, but that's one of the nice things when you're designing automation like this. In the case of something like AWS CloudWatch metrics, which we use, those are available immediately. So depending on your audience, you, you could issue that at the moment your build completed or at the moment your transaction occurred. Um, so yeah, for our, for our case, like you said, that the schedule timer works well, but luckily GitHub's flexible enough that if you know your data is gonna be there, yeah, you know, AWS CloudWatch is milliseconds behind your first event on your Lambda. So you're like, yeah, just yeah, nice. So, so um, are there any other sort of interesting use cases that you've you've thought of or that you had in mind when you were building this? I know a few customers are using this already. Um, without naming names, are there any anything that we've anything we've heard from the field that people are, are using it for? Or is it just pretty much like? stuff's being built in clouds and we just want dashboards for it without having to do anything yeah that was one of the use case and the other use case i've, I've come across is uh, where people ha have to create like the same dashboards for multiple times for different scopes so maybe you're 
workspace is for one um, one set of VMware cluster, then you know if you're managing multiple clusters through multiple workspaces and you don't want to create that dashboard across multiple times, you just create it once and then reuse that across um, several workspaces to have like five exact dashboards across all of those workspaces, um, which was really cool to see that be used like that as well. Yeah, yeah. A perfect example of that is in like a service provider type uh, work workspace, either either an internal service provider for a multinational company or a managed service provider. Maybe you want to provide a view of your services and have just a couple flags that go into Terraform and say, oh, they've they do opt into this build this dashboard under the workspace, or they don't opt in, leave that dashboard out. But Terraform could be a great way that you could provide, you know, 10, 20 yeah. consumers of your service the same dashboard. And when you fix that one bug, whatever, it's a sp spelling bug in my case, it's always spelling, mm -hmm. but you just reapply it and it fixes it 20 times. So it works great for those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the, yeah. the, the case I thought of earlier, um, sort of to, again sort of like acting on like instant data triggering a dashboard to be created is um like diving into an incident but the case i was thinking of was like let's say like a not that we have the concept of like vip customer let's say an enterprise customer logs a like high severity ticket in zendesk we trigger webhooks out of zendesk all the time and for us the the first thing that we would probably do is look at things like the platform logs we'd search for jira for any tickets that have the same tags in zendesk that they do in jira you know there's a bunch of things that we pull together account data the you know value of their deal number of users all the you know like who who is potentially experiencing that issue that kind of stuff being able to just like throw out a dashboard like that like a you know like an incident management dashboard almost when an yeah. incident occurs it's maybe another pretty cool pretty cool use case for you know having to you know saving time on having to like dig around in all your tools and, and build that perfect view yeah, and you could even be collaborative there too and generate a workspace with the first dashboard and send out a link to that and say, we'll create your dashboards here when you find more because that workspace will be generated with the name. And then at the end, we'll just, yeah. you know, you can kind of export it as JSON and say, oh, it's it's solved, but here's what we researched. And like you say, kick, kick it off, get that place ready, get the initial notes there. No hesitation on where. Can you share a dashboard through the Terraform provider? Uh, yeah, so dashboard share is available yeah, nice. as well. So you can turn that on, reply, give back to Zendesk the URL and post it back to the customer, let yeah. them look at their own live incident dashboard as we fix their problem. That's probably a terrifying <laughs> nightmare scenario for, yeah. for anyone involved. You want, you want to stress out all the engineers that work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great public dashboard. <laughs> <laughs> I think that could work well. Um, we have that on the subject of things the provider doesn't do, but we want it to do. Are there any key sort of items in the in the backlog that being worked uh, on? The, yeah, so the main one that I'm looking at is user management. We currently don't support user management as well as like ACLs. Uh, so we'd like the provider to to allow you to create like groups, uh, invite users, and um, configure like workspace ACLs and data sources ACL. So that's that's the next big feature that's coming up. For our, uh, for our provider, yeah. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. So going back to that sort of instant management case, you could create a workspace that was locked to its own group and that group could have just the right people in it. And if they're not yet users in Squared Up, they could be invited to Squared Up as part of that process. That's pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. If there's a, maybe get like the account owner from Salesforce or the, you know, the, the application owner from your CMDB or that kind of stuff. There's, yeah, some pretty cool, things in there all to all to avoid having to build a dashboard i think that's pretty good yeah i think there's some cool security stuff too just for visibility of who can see data so currently we manually go in and kind of tune into the monitoring dashboards but wouldn't it be nice to have like a git repository of who can see what and then when you have an odd question you're like oh it's just here and if anyone tries to change it terraform just strips out their access which it does well brings it back to where it should be yeah. So I'm looking forward to that feature as well. So it'll be nice to say, nope, this is who can access their dashboards. Even if they try to change it, the system yeah. will correct it. Yeah. 
Great. Uh, there was one thing just just to have it sort of put down on paper officially as a as a feature request. I already mentioned this to you earlier, Shaz, but seeing as we're talking about it on something that's recorded that will be available to the public, you'll have to do this now. Yeah, yeah. But, it's been a bit of a what, pressure now. Yeah. What, what one th one thing was indexing, right? So in that case yeah. where your pipeline's just deployed a bunch of new resources, but you already have the plugin configured in squared up. We we index every 12 hours. We figure out what objects you've got every 12 hours. But if you're building a dashboard for like the new web app that was just deployed, the provider kind of needs to be able to tell the plugin to, to re-index. You know, it needs to be able to tell it there's something new to go and find rather than waiting for that 12 hour window. So I want that. So maybe a couple of weeks time, we'll check back in and Yep, I've already bumped that feature up compared Good. to the skills. I, nice. I think that's really useful. So. Yeah, cool. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for, for anyone who's watching this who's interested in in Terraform, um, we'll have, bring up the, the Scottcast email address at the end, but we also have community answers. Um, again, I'll bring up the, the links at the end. Um, I think there's already some, there's a post or two on community answers already related to the Terraform provider. It's a great place generally just to ask questions, whether it's us yep. or other other users who've already sort of figured something out um, it's a great place to sort of share that stuff um, yeah just to add to that as well the um, providers open source as well um so yeah it's on our github uh, organization so feel free to take a look there as well nice um i think there was um you gave me the okay to sort of ask the the, the loaded question of like are there any alternatives to the terraform provider for automating dashboards via your favorite scripting language, Nathan. Yes, yes, there, there is. Um, and there's a couple of mentions on community answers even for it. We've been working in the background on a PowerShell module. So you can get your standard verbs of new dashboard, get dashboard, remove dashboard, all of that stuff in a, personally for me, a more familiar language. I haven't done a ton with Terraform, but I've used PowerShell, geez, what these last 10, 15 years. It seems like it comes up every corner, no matter the task. They're like, oh, there's PowerShell for that. So there will be soon PowerShell to manage your dashboards as well. Nice. So if you're, if you're more comfortable with with that, again, you can add a PowerShell step to a you know an Azure DevOps yeah. pipeline, or just have a, have your favorite script stored somewhere ready to ready to run. Yeah, that, that's for if you don't want to manage your state, then you can use PowerShell. Um, so, yeah. Oh, is there some rivalry already kicking off between <laughs> some sort, maybe? <laughs> PowerShell versus Terraform. Yeah, nice. Um, is there anything else worth sharing on this? We're plenty fine for time if you've got anything else, but otherwise I'll, I can wrap us up. Yeah, I kind of look forward to hearing if other people are having ideas. If you've been just here, we've kind of come up with a couple different ones chatting through, like the incident idea. So I'll keep an eye on the community answer stuff. If yeah. People post related stuff. Looking forward to hearing what, what's happening right. out there. Well, it's probably worth just saying as well, we are, um, the, the provider is reasonably new and we obviously want people to, to be successful with it. So we are going to be um, in our developer relations team. We're going to be churning out a bunch of cool feature blogs, some good walkthroughs, um, maybe adding a few more sort of examples to that repo, definitely some more video content, sort of end-to-end -end sort of walkthrough stuff, um, as well as enhancing what's on our knowledge base around the provider. So plenty of stuff coming soon. Um, this is kind of just a, a taster for those who haven't um, who haven't heard that we have the, the Terraform option yet. Um, but just to quickly go through the, the links for... Um, like we're talking about community answers it is a great forum that we run um for our for customers and non-customers if you've got questions about our products monitoring in general sql analytics all sorts of topics you can head over to community.squaredup.com there's about three and a half thousand members there now um plenty active members on a daily basis so get in there with your questions ask you know feel free to answer questions if you see anything um, that you can help with. That's what it's all about. There's a really good gist section on there as well, where we're sharing things like code snippets, or if you want to use the web API plugin to do Google auth, you know, there's all sorts of really good, great examples over on community answers. Um, if you have any requests on plugins or features, you can head over to feedback.squaredup.com. Our PMs keep a close eye on that um, triage those requests. And we try and get new, new plugins built out as best we can. 
Uh, the gists on community answers are a great sort of stopgap there. If we've got a good idea for a plugin, but we haven't built it yet, we'll probably publish something on um, on community answers for how to sort of do it with the, the web API or PowerShell or, or script plugins. Um, but yeah, if you do want to get in touch, squabcast at squaredup.com. If you want to cast a vote for getting the PowerShell, uh, PowerShell module finished off, definitely chip that in. Or if you've got any other ideas for automating the heck out of everything, feel free to, yeah, feel free to, to get in touch. Um, yeah, we'll leave it there for today. Uh, I want to say thanks again to, to both of you Thank for joining, you. Nathan Chaz. Mm -hmm. I'll try and get you on again for some more engineering talk about something else soon. Um, but yeah, we'll maybe if we'll PowerShell one comes PowerShell. along. Yeah, yeah, PowerShell. It seems like there's a bit of rivalry there already. So maybe I'll just get you back on, Nathan, and Chaz can just watch, but <laughs> <laughs> throw some throw some wit into the comments, but keep them off the stage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I appreciate you joining, and to those of you watching, either live or on the recording, keep in touch, ask questions, join into the community. But yeah, thanks for for watching. See you around. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.